everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to set up an IP camera system for our home or offices. So basically a commercial camera system or a residential camera system. So either one we all usually are using as surveillance purposes. And how can a surveillance camera system benefit us? Well first it protects our safety and protects our property. You can always get an eye on what's happening there. If they, we get vandalized, we have proof to submit to the court or the police for evidence. And then, mostly, the, there are three types of camera used often. It's analog cameras, USB cameras, and PoE IP cameras. And PoE IP cameras are the most often used. This is because the PoE technology can make our installing pro process more convenient than other ones. The PoE IP cameras you need only one Ethernet cable to send both power and data to IP cameras. So when you set up an IP camera system with PoE IP cameras, you literally save like tons of cabling and all you need to figure is how one Ethernet cable will run. Also, the IP cameras provide very high quality videos because they transmit the images in digital signal and digital signal has the ability to kind of take more capture more detail in an image than analog and USB cameras. So what do we need to build an IP camera system? Well a surveillance IP camera system we need a monitor, a recording machine, a power supply, a power sourcing equipment, and our IP camera of course. So let's talk about these four parts separately. A monitor can help us take a look at the footage live or you know manage our recording device which we can download or record on hard disk drives. And speaking of the recording device, the recording device is usually called an NVR, a network video recorder. This is specially designed to record IP cameras because it is it falls under the IP protocol which is internet protocol. This will help us download and we can also access this NVR once we connect to our internet. And then it's the power sourcing equipment. PoE technology provides power and data. Power sourcing equipment will provide the power through the Ethernet, so usually there is a power supply inside. And it is really clear there are Ethernet ports here for us to connect. Some even have uplink ports. Uplink ports are separated usually, like this. One up here on the top, it has two uplink ports here so we can connect to the NVR. This has no power sent through this port, but it kind of get, con co collects all the data and sends to our NVR for us to process, to save, or you know just to view it on our monitor. After that, here comes our IP camera. IP cameras, this is a panel to zoom camera. This camera demands a high level of power, but it has more features. It can it has basically zero blind, blind spots. It can, take, can cover a lot of ground, a lot of area, and it can zoom in up to 100 meters. So it's really cool for IP cameras because they have so many features inside, but like analog and USB, they're mostly just basic cameras with not a lot of operating involved. I'm not saying that IP cameras are the best. We can also have all different kind of demands. So uh, you can choose whatever camera suits you the best for maybe at your budget or maybe at your demands. Just depends on you. There's not a best camera. It's only one that suits you the most. And another for your information, if we want to save more space, we can choose an NVR and the switch combined. This is usually called a PoE NVR, which is a regular NVR, but it has a PoE switch features integrated inside. So it basically has a PoE motherboard also in installed inside or integrated inside this NVR. So it can out connect to IP de uh, devices correct directly and it will process the data inside the NVR itself. It depends. This separating them apart has their their pros, but it also has some cons, so it's all up to you. So now let's take a look at an NVR. An NVR like this usually has starting from 16 channels all the way up to 64 channels. It depends on the model or the manufacturer you get your NVR from. And the NVR has a good thing is it is a very universal device that has on this protocol 
on its program. So then it means it can accept almost any kind of camera which also has the OnMIF protocol programmed inside. The OnMIF protocol is an interface or a forum for, it's like an open network which all different brands or manufactured IP cameras can connect to each other. This means like, it's kind of like a translator helping all the cameras to recognize each other's language like how they were programmed and then they can connect to the NBR and they can, you know, talk to each other, connect to each other and sh exchange data. So now let's talk about the PoE switch. The PoE switch, you can see this is a huge device. We don't, we might not really want this in our household. So maybe in our household, we usually have a Ethernet router. So now let's talk about the PoE switch. You can see these PoE switches are pretty big devices and Sometimes it's hard to find a good spot for this in our house. And also, we might already have a device with switch functions which is usually recognized as a router, like this one in my hand. This is a commonly used router in our house. And then if we want to upgrade our system into a PoE system, do we have to get a PoE switch? Well, the answer is no. You can actually upgrade your home-based router to a PoE standard network with just a PoE injector like this. We can, this is basically just a device that will inject power to our Ethernet. So then when this is, when our router is connected to IB devices, it will also provide power. Now let's say we have a small office. A small office, I recommend you guys to use an eight port PoE switch because eight ports is usually enough for like a, some, a several cameras and a several IP devices. And this is tiny enough to put inside the corner or our network control room. And usually this is eight ports is like the maximum and we have two for uplinking to our security system or to our main network. So this is a really good choice. But if you have like a bigger office, I'd recommend the one down here. This is a 16 port Ethernet exchange switch. So the 16 port PoE switch has like two times more ports than the one on top of it. And also you can see it has up to uplink ports as well and it has higher bandwidth so it can accept processing and transmitting more data than a eight port PoE switch. So usually for choosing a PoE switch, I'd recommend to choose depending on how big your office is. And 16 port PoE switch has power, higher power output so it can support more IP devices connected to it. If you have a too big of an office and you choose an 8 port, sometimes the power supply might not be enough for that much devices. And also, like for this one, we have 30 watts maximum. The one on the bottom, the 16 port PoE switch, we have 60 watts ma maximum. And the other feature for this one on the bottom, the 16 port PoE switch, is it can be managed to do, to kind of divide the bandwidth. So some ports you connect to a device which does not require a lot of internet speed, then you can like lower the bandwidth on that one, and the others you can raise the bandwidth for faster internet access. Now let's take a look at our IP device. This is a pan up to zoom camera. This one, this camera has a metal, metal casing, we can see, and then the metal casing will help us release more heat because some Panatos and cameras, they have a motor inside for making the spinning and zooming, tilting happen faster. So whenever it's like running on a lot of features at the same time, it might have heat up and the metal casing helps it cool down really good. And then this is an IP rated, rated IP67 waterproof. So it is okay to like install this and put it outside. The weather and the dust will be totally sealed, not be able to penetrate it. And also the zooming can go all the way to 20 times or 30 times further. So this can give us a really clear image, 100, maybe up to 200 meters. If we're using a panel to zoom camera or surveillance camera to look at some place or to cover some place far away, a panel to zoom camera would be a good feature, a good choice. Now let's just simply connect the PTZ camera to a POE switch then to the NVR and we'll see an image on our monitor. This is gonna be a really easy process. So what we're gonna need is Ethernet cables, of course, and I'm gonna connect one end to our NVR and another to our eight port PoE switch. Uplink port, because the uplink port 
will send the data back to the NVR, a really good port to use for that. And here is our power cord, really easy. And I'll get another Ethernet cable for the PTZ camera. And another Ethernet cable, any random port will do, but these four have higher power. You can see this green dot. And then I'll connect to our PTZ camera. The PTZ camera will have a self-diagnosis at the first. This means the power's going through now, and after a short minute, it's gonna have images showing on the monitor. As you can see, if something appeared on the monitor, I'm going to wave my hand in front of the camera to see if it's a live film video. And you can see there's movement in front of the camera, so there's movement in on the monitor. So yes, this is a very thorough connection and success. Now if you have any more questions on how to set up an IP camera system for surveillance purposes, feel free to leave them on the section below. Uh, thank you guys for watching today, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.